Hello, my name is Marcus. I'm the compiler of a therapy quotes collection entitled Psychoanalytic Self-Awareness Quotes. Uh, this will be TQ5, a very short one. The disorders of the self triad. Self activation leads to abandonment depression or much anxiety, which leads to defense. James Masterson. This very brief quote uh, summarizes a lot, I think. Um, so it has three parts. Whenever a person decides to, quote, self-activate means to, maybe they want to take care of themselves better, or maybe they want to uh, do something that's right for them. Um, maybe they want to stop using a certain defense mechanism. Uh, if they're passive aggressive a lot, maybe they think, well, that's not authentic. I'll, I'll just start using I statements. I'll say, you know, when this happens, you know, I feel this way, I felt this way. And so maybe they want to, uh, be more maybe real to themselves and, and maybe they decide that I'm only going to make acquaintances or friends with people where there's reciprocity and caring and um, you know maybe there's they're going to make better decisions for themselves so any kind of self-activation it's usually some kind of self-care related um, and, and th this uh, this is something new usually um, okay that can trigger uh, what he what Masterson calls abandonment depression. That's like a, an umbrella term he uses, and underneath that umbrella, he's got anxiety, fear, anger, helplessness, hopelessness, despair, sadness, all all lots of all those uncomfortable feelings that a child felt when he wanted to do something and got rejected, or got punished, or or, or whatever. So self-activation triggers those old memories, and that and Masterson calls that the abandonment depression. Now at that point, uh, a person, if he's overwhelmed, the tendency is he's going to adopt a defense. Defense mechanisms are there to deal with anxiety. So whatever that defense is for the person. Uh, Maybe he'll run to the fridge and start eating a box of cookies or something, you know, or um, you know, uh, become hyper busy or something. W whatever he does to quell his his anxiety. So it's funny because um, if you think about it, um, the things that we do are either from our heart, from our real selves, or or as a defense, we're, we're defending, we're living as a defense mechanism. Um, so this quote kind of helps to clarify that distinction. Um, you know, one quote is, we do everything from love, or it's a call for love, you know, everything. We're learning, that's, that's self-activation, or we're judging, that's, that's maybe a defense. Or so not learning. So that's not right. So um, you know, you know this this quote actually sort of started me on this, this started me on this uh, reading journey to learn about this uh, so-called psychoanalytic perspective. Again, psychoanalytic just means past present links. How something we learned in the past becomes a pattern in the present. And then to see yourself doing it in the here and now with somebody, and then to find the thread between the three, not be, uh, between the three. And uh, if you have the right words and put them in the right order, it's called an interpretation. If, if you're if you're very good with language and then you can see the three parts, uh, what we learned, the pattern we 
repeat uh, over and over again the broken record and then uh, and then to see yourself live in the moment doing it with a friend or, or with your partner and then if you can do it yourself you can say oh I'm doing this now with you which, which is what I regularly do just like back when I was th five I did this <laughs> if you can put that thread together it's called it an interpretation uh, Karen Hornite calls that self-analysis you know but um, you know what's interesting about this quote is if if you keep the, little, this quote in mind a little bit and you're aware of it it'll lead to a dream it, it, it can uh, lead to a dream that the night after right like when you go to sleep that day, uh, the next morning you might realize, I just had an interesting dream. And it's positive. It's Well, it, it, the dream will demonstrate the cycle. It'll show something happy, like because you're self-activating. You, so you felt very good in the dream. And then there was that fear. And then you woke up because the fear was too great. And the defense w was, in that case, to wake up because you couldn't bear it anymore in the dream and um, you know Masterson describes this uh, quite frequently throughout his books this, this sequence self-activation leads to abandonment depression leads to defense and uh, and he uses the umbrella term the disorders of the self triad um, I, he doesn't like to he doesn't like to use so-called personality disorders, it's a little too judgmental. So he compromised, he said, well, it's a disorder of the self. So he's something in the middle there. And all that means is, uh, if a person has some kind of, if, if enough of a part of a person has arrested development prior to the age of three, before the psychological birth of the self. So if he has it during, uh, between, say, you know, from birth to three, that can lead to what all these, all these books talk about is a disorder of the self. So if you're arrested, develop, if you're arrested during the symbiosis phase, uh, you know, the, the, they're always looking for fusion and mirroring and uh, they, they're afraid to be alone. They want, it's very romantic, of course, it's very, you know, <laughs> They always want to be fused with somebody. Uh, or if you're arrested later on, the differentiation phase, uh, then you're struggling with your your identity, you know, boundaries and things. Uh, practicing phase, you're, you try something and then you give it up quickly because there's no support to explore when you're a kid and you're learning things. Or the rapprochement phase where you explore, but then you want to go back for support and your mom says, no, I, I don't want you to leave me. I want you to be dependent on me. And that's, uh, uh, Masterson, for that, he uh, he also had a trouble with terminology. He calls that the borderline pattern. Not the borderline the way most people use it. Uh, he just means the border between uh, the first three subphases of the separation individuation process that's for another quote by the way and and the psychological birth of the self integration of all the self parts so, so you're in the in between that he calls that being in the border and, and he thinks it is kind of dramatic because you have you're afraid to be yourself you're afraid to be alone you're, you you don't want to get too close you know so there's this oscillation there Anyways, um, to put it more simply, anything that's dysfunctional in a person or anything that's neurotic or <laughs> where a person thinks he, he's not acting in his best self-interest or he's caught in some rut or something, um, that's all it really means. Um, I know these terms are, are turn a lot of people off. It um, takes a while to digest them and okay, okay. Robert Bly has a quote, he says, Forgive psychology for its jargon. Just forgive it. <laughs> you know? 
that's always stuck with me that one um, yeah um, and as I mentioned in the first video uh, master sin is one of the pillars in this series and uh, he really he's really the finest teacher of object relations theory um, it may have started with Melanie Klein and Fair of Bain, uh, but he, he's the one that really synthesized it and, and made it understandable. Without without Masterson, I I don't I I, I think we really would have lost a lot. Um, so yeah, um, I feel like there's more that needs to be said about it. There's so much more. But um, I guess I'll just have to save it for the next video. So thank you uh, very much. That's uh, TQ5. See you next time.